What is up, everybody? I'm back with another video. Man, Terry 242 does a criminal history carjacking, running from cops, six years in jail by Hip Hop Daily. And if you want to know where I've been, bro, can't lie, I just been no life in 2K, bro. I'm just, you know what I'm saying? Keep it a stack, bro. I like, you know what I'm saying? I like, don't tell you, bro. I'm trying to hit level 40. Nine days left of the season, bro. Hey, Photo Doug is one of the hottest rappers out right now. A lot of people probably don't know that he actually started rapping when he was locked up for six years on carjacking charges. So let's break down the rap sheet and the come up of Fotu Dub. The Fotu in his name refers to the Fotu Hustle Boys, a Detroit Crip gang branched off of the Fotu Gangsta Crips who started in LA. The Fotu Hustle Boys hood is in a six mile area of Detroit. I thought, I thought the 42 meant because he was 42 inches tall. That's what I thought it meant. They known to beef with the Seven Mile Bloods, whose hood ain't too far away. Sada Baby, another popular rapper from Detroit, is from the Seven Mile Bloods, so he and Doug don't really rock with each other like that. Doug started getting in trouble at a young age. When he was 15, he got arrested for carjacking and felony firearm possession. A judge gave him four years in a juvenile prison, and being arrested so young, Doug ain't had much of a chance to finish school. So with nothing else to do, he taught himself how to rap while he was locked up. But he ain't start rapping. Doug be rocking dummy chains, boy on oh God. God. I can't lie, bro. I know his neck be heavy, bro. Right away, though. He said he picked it up about four years in. Because originally, he was supposed to be released after four years. But he got into it with another inmate, which added time to his bid. So he ended up doing like six years total before being released. And really, that just gave Doug another two years to work on his rapping skills. He was even sent to solitary confinement for a month at a time on at least two separate occasions. But being in solitary really took a toll on his mind and his body. In the interview with GQ, he says he only ate once a day, and on some days, he survived off of just one cookie. He came out the hole weighing only 110 pounds. He also said there was a CO that would come up in his cell when he wasn't in there and steal his pants just to mess with him. While in solitary, he was locked down 23 hours out the day and was only allowed one hour to hang out in the yard. Bro, solitary confinement, that is like, bro, that is, bro, like, that should not be it, bro. You're locked in a room for 23 hours a day. How are you, like, how are you so mentally supposed to stay stable? Locked in a room for 23 hours a day with nothing, no TV, you just looking at a wall, bro, like, that's... So, when he was in his cell, he was writing raps. And when he was out on the yard, he would spit his bars for the other inmates. One of his close homies, a dude named Lou, was also in solitary with him, but in a different cell. Doug first showed him his raps, and Lou told him to spit them for the dudes in the yard. Doug says his early raps wasn't really all that good, but he still got a positive reaction from the other inmates, which kept him pushing. So by the time he got out, he was already 22 years old. And with only knowing a few skills and slim chances of going back to school, Doug went all in with the rapping. He linked up with another rapper from the Fotu Hustle Boys, Fotu Twin, who brought him to the studio. This was when he first started recording the raps he wrote in jail and released his first mixtape, 11241 Wayburn, in July 2018, then followed with a part two just a week later. Not long after that, he got up with another rapper who was popping in the city, Babyface Ray, and together they dropped the track The Streets. The song blew up in Detroit and started to build Fotu Doug some hype. The track caught the attention of another popular Detroit rapper, T Grizzly, who already built a major name for himself in the industry. Grizzly ended up flying Fotu Doug out to LA to network with other artists and producers. While Doug was out there, he ended up bumping in a little baby and they instantly became friends. According to Doug, he and Baby met during a dice game. And yeah, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Being friends with a little baby in the rap industry, that that's 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 big, because I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't even like Lil Baby, but I can't lie, bro. He he is doing his thing, bro. Him and Lil Dirk, bro, they, they going to crazies right now. I can't lie, bro. In an interview with Billboard, Doug even admitted that Baby broke him for a lot of bread. But Doug ain't even take it personally. Then, one day, Doug called Baby, and Baby and his people was playing Doug's music and rapping the words to his songs. Baby told Doug to come out to Atlanta to work on some music, and they ended up recording a few tracks together. Two of those tracks, Grace and We Paid, made it to Lil Baby's 2017 album, My Turn. This collaboration- Yeah, 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 we paid. Yeah, 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 we paid. She gave Doug way more attention from mainstream fans, and this was when his career really started taking off. This collab also grabbed Yo Gotti's attention. Lil Baby was the one who turned Gotti on to Doug's music, and the Memphis rap legend felt like he had real potential. Doug said that Yo Gotti, as well as Young Jeezy, was his biggest inspirations as rappers. 
so getting a co-sign from one of his rap idols was a major achievement for him. So Doug would later sign a joint deal with Yo Gotti CMG label and also Lil Baby's 4PF label. So 42 Doug's career was turning up and it seemed like he was well on his way to becoming rap's next big star. But even after he was starting to blow up, he still had that same street mentality that kept getting him in trouble with the law. On March 10, 2020, Doug got hit with a federal firearms charge after being seen at a gun range shooting a pistol. In November 2019, Doug went to Stoddard's Range and Guns in Atlanta with Is two of his homies. He ain't purchased any weapons, but surveillance footage got him holding, loading, and firing a 9mm pistol. Since he a convicted felon, Doug ain't allowed to touch any guns as a condition of his parole. Now even though he never left the range with a gun or even fired at anyone, it's still a violation of his parole to even hold the weapon bro, in his- what you, Bro, he be wearing dummy chains, bro. Like that Cuban link is stupid. The range with a gun or even fired at anyone, it's still a violation of his parole to even hold the weapon in his hand. Doug was arrested in March 2020 after the ATF got an anonymous tip that the rapper had broken his parole. Police reviewed the footage from the gun snitch. range and confirmed it was Doug with a 9mm and a warrant was issued for his arrest. He was arrested in Detroit, but was supposed to be sent to Atlanta to stand trial. During his arrest, police also took a cell phone, which prosecutors say had pictures of semi-automatic weapons and bricks of marijuana. They mm. also found text messages where Doug allegedly threatened to kill someone, and there was also details about a gray Dodge Challenger that was towed from his crib after being sprayed up with bullets. Authorities also say that while he was in jail, he made a suspicious phone call where he told someone to clean his room. Prosecutors claimed the photos on his phone proved that he had guns stashed under his mattress and was telling the other person to get rid of him. But all this evidence was really just speculation and they ain't catch up with no guns or drugs other than the one in the surveillance footage. So the judge let him post his $10,000 bond on three conditions. He had to wear a GPS angle monitor, avoid firearms, and also leave Detroit to stay with his girlfriend in Macomb County. But man, Doug wouldn't be out on the streets for long. He got arrested again after fleeing from police during a minor traffic stop. On June 5th, 2020, police tried to pull over a Chevy Tahoe that was driving through the suburbs of Detroit. At first, the Tahoe pulled over once police flashed their lights. But then, as police approached, it took off and made a quick getaway. Police couldn't catch up, but they was able to run the place. Mm. And when they ran the place, they found out it was actually a rental car that was registered to a club promoter. After doing a little bit of research, the police discovered that Foto Doug was one of the promoter's main clients. From there, they used surveillance footage from around the area to determine that Foto Doug was the one Boy, driving they when they tried to pull him over. He was able to escape and got away with it for two whole months. But in August of 2020, Doug got arrested in Oakland County, Michigan and charged with fleeing a police officer, which is a third degree felony. He was released on a $20,000 bond, but again, he was required to wear an ankle monitor as part of his release. So if he's convicted, he faces up to five years in prison a $1,000 fine, and he'll get his driver's license suspended. Mm. So, even though Doug's had a few blessings in his career, he's also had a few setbacks as well. But he ain't letting that stop his hustle. In April 2021, he dropped a track for The Gang, featuring Roddy Rich, which peaked at number 67 on the Billboard Hot 100. Right before the song dropped, Doug and Roddy was filming the video at a scrapyard in Atlanta. During the shoot, someone started letting off shots, leaving two men wounded. Doug and Roddy ain't get hit, but Alabama rapper OMB Peasy was later arrested for the shoot. Alabama rapper OMB Peasy. ...and charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Now, it's not clear if Doug or Roddy was being targeted or if Peasy just happened to be there and was shooting at someone else. I don't know, but Peasy's maintained his innocence and said it was just a big misunderstanding. Doug would then release his fourth mixtape, Free Them Boys, on May 21st, 2021, which featured appearances from Future, Lil Durk, ESTG, Fabio Foreign, and Rowdy Rebel. It came out at number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100, which was Doug's highest charting project ever. So Doug definitely got a promising future ahead of him, as long as he's able to stay out of trouble. The charges he's facing ain't really that serious, and he's been showing a desire to change his life. Plus, the charge that put him on parole in the first place happened when he was still just a kid. So that should work in his favor. But man, getting arrested twice back to back, even if they was just minor arrests, definitely ain't a good look for someone still on probation. It don't seem yeah. like he'll do any more jail time for the charges, especially since he got lawyer money now to fight the case. But it could result in more probation, which means it might be much worse the next time he slips up. Hopefully, Doug can keep his head down and focus on the music, so he don't end up like Pooh Shiesty or NBA Youngboy.
Yeah, Pushaisi NBA young boy. Oh man. Pushaisi one line when he said, I got my own fight on me security in the club. <laughs> Bro, and, and NBA young boy, I, I, I like I don't even know what to tell him, bro. Like he just like he just do what he want to do. I guess he he just don't care. He just you know what I'm saying he gonna do what he want to do. But yeah, that's me. Then this video, bro. Like, comment, subscribe, and we out, bro.